Hey everyone, before we dive right into the action, I just wanted to let you know that all the opening theory used in this series can be found in my latest London system course, will be the first link in the description. Alright, getting a game, got a white pieces, got a little avatar here, feeling already way more confident and gonna be trying to unleash the power of the London system. So we see the Chigorin. And when they're playing with knight f6, we're going to be doing e3. And if they do whatever, instead of knight f6, we're going to be playing with c4 lines. That's like the easiest way to remember. And all right, let's see what they have in mind. I think most of the people play knight f6. We go e3. And now they basically have two main plans. Bishop outside the pawn chain or to g4. Or bishop inside the pawn chain with d6. All three options, I would say, are... Equally popular. You should be prepared against all of them for sure. And okay, when they do e6, bishop b5 plan, which I recommend when they do with the bishop outside the pawn chain. I go for this and then knight e5. Whenever they do e6, it's just about uh, playing like normal London fashion c3. Idea to play bishop d3 without allowing knight b4. And now bishop d6 is what everyone does. And now we're going to be allowing the Berkey structure. Everyone will take on f4 now. We're going to be taking with a pawn. And after the castle, we play bishop d3. Yeah, they're going to go there. We're going to develop the bishop. This is just really nice to play for us because we have a much more active bishop because this is blocked by the e6 pawn. So getting the bishop out. Now I guess they can either play a6 or uh, rook e8. Those are like the most common moves for black i think and then okay or even bishop d7 those three candidates i would say and then we're gonna be playing knight e5 against no matter what okay he does b6 gonna steal the knight e5 this is actually even more precise than castling expecting him to take this knight and we take back with the f pawn and okay let's see he could also protect with bishop b7 I think that would be maybe a bit better than taking. Problem is that opponent has bad internet and he keeps disconnecting. And we might uh, win this game just because of the disconnection thing. But okay, he actually ends up playing bishop b7, which is great. If he was taking, I was actually about to do this and then throw in queen h5. g6, queen h6 and just push the h-pawn down the board. But against bishop b7... Can go for like the slower game, could play queen f3, queen h3. I think both are uh, very reasonable. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna keep it simple at this point, just castle and potentially later on do this maneuver, bringing the queen around the king side, putting pressure on h7 together with the bishop. And okay, on queen e7, just gonna get my queen out, preparing something like this. And then queen h3. Now we're definitely piling up on that h7 square. So taking would be pretty dangerous, I would say. Maybe you could still get away with it with knight e4. And on f3, there's like knight g5. But that feels really shaky. I can go queen g3 and the knight has no squares. h4, huge threat in that position. So he does go g6, just uh, trying to sort of limit my uh, my bishop. I'm going to go rook a e1, could actually use the other one as well. But I have a feeling this rook can be useful on f1. Let's just use this one now. I think it's maybe simplest. And okay, let's see. We could potentially have an idea to open it up with f5 now, exploiting some pin. And yeah, like f5 pawn takes, there's knight g6. f5 pawn takes, I think there is bishop takes. And pawn takes, like, same motive, maybe knight c6. So it goes knight h5, hitting this guy. Okay, maybe just g3. Defending, this is just a nice sort of easy way to protect f4. Maybe it was not best move, but... I'm just trying to play like the most natural kind of lines. 
just keeping it super easy and beginner friendly. And okay, now I think I can go for the f5 motif. Now if pawn takes knight c6, if they take with a g-pawn, bishop takes on f5, with same trick. So it's really happening because of this pin. Without that pin, f5 wouldn't have been great immediately. Sure, could have prepared it g4 with f5, but I don't think we need to throw in the g-pawn this time and we can just uh, basically just go for it immediately. He does take one e5, but gonna be taking with a pawn. And after he moves the knight, I think we're gonna be gaining a nice mating net with f6 coming on the next move and queen joining the h6 square. Okay, he goes there. Definitely f6 looks very juicy. Hitting the queen, the queen has to move. I guess he'll go to either c5 or d7. And against that, gonna go g4. Knight f4 and then queen h6 seems to be getting the checkmate. That looks pretty pretty easy and don't really see a whole lot of card play for my opponent. And perhaps if he takes on f6, taking would be a bit inaccurate. It's even better, I think, to play queen h4 after that. And he has no way to run. Maybe king g7 only move, but we get into the end game. Okay, queen d7 just going g4 as I said. Uh, getting rid of the knight so we can uh, put our queen on h6. Sure, he can get my bishop, but I'm gonna get a checkmate, which is even better. So there's actually no way for the opponent to defend against this threat of uh, mating one, and uh, we managed to get this one in. Getting the white pieces, opening up with d4 and against d5. Developing the knight. This is my favorite move order. We get to see the Chigorin. Will it be a two knights? Okay, it's bishop f5, so here as I was saying, against knight f6, we play e3 and bishop outside the pawn chain, we get a pin, bishop inside the pawn chain, play normal London. If they play bishop f5, then I recommend all the, I mean, I recommend c4 against everything. So whether it's bishop uh, pawn f6, just c4, bishop g4, e3, and then c4 plan. So that's like an easy way to remember, because if we play e3, e6, and then bishop b5, he has 97 ideas to just keep everything defended, so. Now c4 as a rule of thumb works pretty well. I expect a lot of these guys to go for like knight b4 in this position, and uh, we just have a great queen a4 check to get a winning position right from the opening. And against dc, we can develop. And now again, like knight b4 could be a try. Yeah, see, they, they always do this kind of thing, but now we have a check. Hitting this, he's gonna be forced to go back home, but after knight c6, we can go d5 and we get to win a piece, so. This is just an easy way to get a completely winning position against this early uh, kind of nonsense with the bishop out on f5, and then they're going for what beginners like to re uh, refer to as the fried liver, <laughs> which is pretty funny. And now, because the knight is pinned, this was forced because it was under attack, and <clears throat> can get to play d5 and just uh, get to collect the knight on the next move because of the pin. And yeah, we just managed to win in like uh, seven moves. All from theory. I think this is uh, explained in the course as well. Basically up till this point. And uh, of course, it's more critical for them to do knight c3 and now play knight f6. And after e3 e6, bishop takes on c4, we have a lot of lines covering that, uh, I mean covering those positions, but okay, after they play uh, knight b4, queen a4 just is a very nice move to punish, and d5 wins, this could happen a lot below like 1000 rating, and uh, yeah, okay, he might have disconnected, I mean we played this opponent perhaps a bit earlier, so okay, never mind, he didn't, he played knight f6, but still, after this, he just get to collect the piece. And now having a huge threat of taking and going for the discovery check. And then, okay, if b6, can activate the rook, bring it with tempo, hit the queen, maybe knight b5 next, hitting c7, just winning the house. 
Gonna be winning the house there. Can we? Would that be too much to ask for? I don't know, but I have a pretty funny idea in mind. I'm gonna go knight b5, and if he allows me, I'm gonna go... Okay, he goes to b8. I'm gonna do this. Hitting c7. And I wanted to, like, somehow distract his queen so that we can get this with mate. But I'm afraid we're only gonna be winning his queen. So, yeah. Can do knight c7. Just gonna stick with a simple move. Only move to take my knight, because the file is pinned. He has to do this. Collect the queen. And then it should be pretty simple. Yeah, we're about to mate him in the center. And bishop d8 could be an idea. Bishop b6, just something to make room for the pawn. And we don't even need to like develop the king side at this point, being ahead. So much material. Let's just do bishop d8, because it's looking pretty funny. And now if rook takes, there is c7. And if rook d7, we can promote with checkmate. Which is pretty nice theme. Okay, c7 hitting the rook. <laughs> if bishop d7... Uh, maybe still like same uh, motive. Rook d7 could be played. And okay, now we get to promote with queen and mate. Could have actually promoted the rook and mated, but... That's even nicer, I think. So we managed to get this one in. So before I let you go, I just wanted to quickly show how effective the move trainer technology can be. And I'll do that by highlighting one of the new blinds that we have, which is super similar to the actual game. And we can go here. We are in the course chapter here dedicated to the Chigorin. And we can click on learn moves. And now, by the way, I have this uh, just about in the dark mode. If this doesn't look like the same for you, you can go into the top right and switch to dark mode. And now we're just basically going to start practicing. And uh, this is just how you can easily remember your opening and start crashing the noob line. So we destroy the center. Black is forced to like play queen a5. Otherwise, they lose a piece. And you can throw in this nice e4 move. Set up a strong center and get to collect the pawn with a... Uh, with a winning position already, with the extra opponent. A uh, nice center, so uh, now the algorithm will ask us to do the whole sequence one more time. And you can actually have a customized setting, so if you have a feeling that, okay, maybe 3 for you is not the number and you may want to go for 5 times the repetition, then you can do that. Uh, you can easily change it in like the settings here. And it's basically really easy to customize for uh, every individual. And yeah, pe personally, I just have it on like the standard format, which is repeating uh, the process three times, as you can see. And now we just do this. And by the way, just to highlight how this is super effective, if let's say instead of e4, we play like bishop takes on c7, that's going to show us uh, as an incorrect move. And it's going to make us uh, play the right one a couple of times. So now, even though we managed to get it, the algorithm will make us repeat the position where we actually went wrong for a number of times. Again, I think that it can be customized. I have it on the default now. So we just do that and basically we managed to finish studying the line. So if you're still debating whether to get the course or not, I can assure you that it is super beginner friendly. You can apply it in all rating ranges starting from like 500 as we see in the video while already getting these lines that we've just seen. And with just about giving your money back in the first 30 days guaranteed, you basically have no risk. So if you're looking to check the course out, you can actually click on this picture. Or if you perhaps are looking for uh, more London system content, you can check out that video.